Happy Tuesday, my gritty Vikings, and welcome back. It's back to school time. Spring break is over, and it's time to get back to work. Um, so speaking of spring break, how was yours? Um, I know none of us went anywhere. We didn't do anything because, you know, we're stuck at home in quarantine. Um, I did backyard work and got my backyard looking really good. Pool's almost ready for swimming. The kids are, they jumped in. It's like, are you serious? It's, they're like, oh, it's really cold. Duh. Anyways, but, uh, like I said, it was productive. And, uh, when I, and one of the things I've been doing over break and I want to talk to you guys about is goal setting. Um, I know we have our reading goals and those are still in effect. And we have other goals that we're doing, all the rest, but I don't know about you guys, but this has been driving me crazy. I miss you. I love teaching. It is my thing. I miss our interaction. I miss your silly faces. I miss your stupid jokes. I miss all of it. But, and I was really depressed, like super, super. And I still have days where I'm just like, no, I don't want to get out of bed. So about four days ago, I decided, I'm gonna start walking and there's a nice two mile route that I do from my house and I finished a book on tape and this author was talking about how she was in these plays and so I thought you know what I'm gonna listen to her music and one of the things I've been doing every day is I go for a walk and I listen to something new now, I love listening to the same old stuff over and over again, just like you guys do. But you know I love Broadway, you know I love plays and all that. So I thought I'm gonna listen to a different soundtrack uh, cast recording every day. So we are four days in, I've listened to four different soundtracks. It's been really good for my psyche. It makes me listen to something new. It's like listening to new things, but good beats laughing along, singing along. Yeah, I sing while I walk. People think I'm crazy, they leave me alone. Um, but it's just something I'm doing. So I wanna know what are you guys doing or try something. Get out of those comfort zones, get out of those beds. Let's see what we can do, all right? Speaking of comfort zones, like how I'm seg segueing this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm sure by now you have seen um, Mr. Casayas's gritty principal uh, dropping of tomorrow starring you know some of your favorite teachers and even Forky so one of the things that um, I want to see is um, I'm gonna have a challenge up in Google Classroom I want to know number one do you want to see the whole Forky video because it's pretty funny number one and number two, one of the things I've been doing is I've been spending a lot of time with this. And I realized that we didn't really go over the Greek um, chant very well. I'm writing the Rome one. And just for you, Matthew, I have written a Viking one. And I've never gone even over the mythology one with you guys. It's like 10 stanzas long. If you want to see some chants, if you want to see the Forky, I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in Google Classroom. You have to tell me. You have to vote. Now, I'm not putting it on a Google form because Google Forms, no, no, no. You can do those more than once. Majority rules. There's about 29 of you signed up for Google Classroom. If you want to see it, you got to tell me. So I need at least 15 of you to tell me, yes, we want to see the Forky video. Yes, drop some more chants, Ms. Rimmer. Something like that. But you have to tell me, not anything else. All right. Um, let's talk school stuff. Now, lunches are continuing Monday through Thursday at school. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, I'm going to be still working on Tuesdays. Uh, there's going to be Voorhees teachers and staff Monday, Tuesdays. Hort and Stern people Wednesday, Thursdays. You're still entitled to go. Please come get your food and all the rest they closed down their lunch services, so we're all just working out of Voorhees Cafeteria. Um, but come along, get your food. If you come on Thursdays, you actually get four meals. You get Thursday's lunch, you get Thursday to Friday too. So 
come along and do it. Um, we've got that going on. Thank you to those of you who came and picked up packets and Chromebooks. Ah, you guys made my heart happy on Thursday when I saw some of you out there in the rain coming and getting your stuff. Um, packet drop off for this next packet. This beast will probably be in about the first, second week of May. And at that time, you'll get a, the last packet of the year. Also, I'm hoping, I have been begging, begging, begging Mr. Kasai's, hey, can we work out something where you guys can come get your stuff from your class, from your desks? Because I want to get in, wrap your stuff up, label it all, and be like, here you go. I also want my books back. Do not go into seventh grade with my books. Um, so I want my stuff back. You guys want to get rid of it too. You don't want to sit there with a pile of Percy Jackson books or whatever. Uh, we'll bring that up. Um, and that I think is it. Oh, speaking of Percy Jackson, I'm going to put Sea of Monsters on a different uh, channel. Uh, not channel, a different video. Um, they get to be too long. So that way there you get a full chapter at a time. It's there. You can grab it and watch it. But for today, we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, I'm just going to go day by day with the packet with you. And that's where we're going to go next. I actually borrowed something from work, my handy dandy um, document camera. So that's where we're going next. And get your packet out, get your pencils out. It's time to learn. And welcome to the distance learning packet. So here we go. I've got my pen, I've got the packet, and we're going to start. So every day you've got some clues to help you uh, for help online. Plus you've got your week one activity tracker where you can put your name and go from there. You should be reading, writing, doing math, movement, art project, and letting us know how many minutes a day you should read. We can go through here. Now, if you want to use this form, you can. If you want to use the Google Classroom and just uh, type out a document and tell me the title, pages, minutes, summary, it's up to you. All right, so three weeks, three trackers. Now, one of the things they started us off with is some PE movements. Now, I'm not going to go through this with you. It's kind of the stuff we do is brain breaks in class. But as I told you earlier, I'm also walking a lot. So you need to do what you need to do to help you with your um, staying fit. All right. Day one, reading and writing, independent reading. Read for 30 minutes, just like it, just like normal. Read and annotate, source one, science to study Persian Gulf reefs for coral survival clues, for information to use in your explanatory article. Notice the winter chart and write a reflection on your independent reading. Then we have a task to do in math. And that's it. So the second page starts with, this is where you can read a book or article of your choice. And if you want to draw a picture of it, you can do that totally up to you. Now, let's take a look at these pictures. This is sort of like ALD. Analyze the following two pictures. What do you notice? What do you wonder? You just use the notice and wonder chart to write down your responses. So you've got a forest and you've got, well, it looks like the forest has been cut down. So on the next page, what do you see? What do you wonder? What do you notice? What do you think about? Okay. Next part, I'm trying to make this straight here. Your assignment, essential question. What are ways that human behavior affects the environment? Explanatory article writing prompt. Using more than one source to develop a claim or thesis, an essay, to explain how the behaviors of humans affect the environment. On day one, you will take notes using source one. On day two, you will take notes on source two and three, as well as develop a thesis statement. On day four and five, you will complete a draft, revise, analyze, edit, finalize your essay. Clearly organize your article and elaborate on your ideas. Develop your ideas clearly and use your own words except when 
quoting directly from the sources. Be sure to reference the source title or number when quoting or paraphrasing. So this is very much a do what chart. So if we were going to pull our paper over and make a do what, because that's a lot of reading. What did they want us to do? They want us to use more than one source, okay? They want us to take notes, all right? They want us to develop a thesis. A thesis is, or a claim. Basically, it's sort of like a hypothesis. I, humans affect the environment badly. How do you know this? Well, I'm gonna prove it to you next in this. Uh, but we're gonna go through this in days. Um, you, they want you to organize. They want you to elaborate. They want you to cite sources. All right, so this is our do what chart. So now this, all this blah, 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 comes down to this. Got it, simple. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside for now and we'll reference it through the week. All right, and then this is a rubric for you to follow. Did you capitalize? Did you use evidence? Did you organize? All right, source one, scientist study Persian Gulf reefs for coral survivor clues. This picture is taken in Australia's Great Barrier Reef shows bleaching, bleach branching coral in the foreground, normal branching coral in the background. So they're showing that something is turning the coral white. The Persian Gulf coral reefs have only 10% of the diversity of reefs in some of the other waters, and they're not quite as pretty to look at. But the waters off the United Arab Emirates, or the UAE coast, might contain something even more precious. Scientists think it may, might hold clues to what could help other reefs survive the climate change that has caused ocean waters to become warmer. Most coral reefs in mild temperate climates can only withstand temperatures as high as 29 degrees Celsius, or about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the water is that warm before they release the algae living in their tissues. This bleaching process causes them to turn white. More importantly, it increases their vulnerability to disease and death because coral depends on the algae for food. Yet scientists have found that coral reefs in the Persian Gulf can handle water temperatures as high as 36 degrees Celsius or 97 degrees Fahrenheit. That's warmer than water temperatures expected to decline in the next century. John Burt, a marine biologist at New York University, says Persian Gulf corals offer hope. He believes their genetic characteristics could help corals in other areas survive warmer temperatures. Oceans are changing. Pollution, overfishing, and building along coastal areas have caused reefs to lose 50% of the coral in some places. Still, most scientists say climate change is the biggest threat to the future. Warming waters spark bleaching events, along with bleaching, the ocean is becoming more acidic. It happens as the ocean absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, also blamed on climate change. Acidification makes it harder for the corals to calcify. Uh, calcify means turn hard, turn into like bones, teeth, calcium, and their shells to grow. The coral has difficulty thriving. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration warned that warming waters could lead to global bleaching event in 2015. That would be the third one in the past two decades. Scientists believe most coral reefs will be under threat by 2040. Corals and the algae that live with them are adapting as the water around them gets warmer. And unfortunately, these genetic changes are not happening, happening as quickly as the earth is warming, meaning they are having a hard time keeping up with the changes. It's not all doom and gloom. Scientists who study the Persian Gulf are challenging ideas about where the corals are headed. They've shown that coral reefs can bounce back from bleaching events 
clients faster than previously thought. They may even be able to acquire tougher, stronger algae in a relatively short time. It's not all doom and gloom for corals, says Andrew Baker, a marine biologist at the University of Miami. Corals have a repertoire of responses. It means they have lots of responses, Baker says. He added that in some cases, coral can respond to bleaching very quickly within a few years. So the bleaching means all of their good stuff goes out. And what comes, you know, and how can they get back from that? Baker's work prompted Bert and several of his peers to spend the last three years studying reefs off the coast of the UAE and Oman. They discovered a new type of algae that could handle the warmer water. Their research suggests it was unique to the Persian Gulf. The researchers demonstrated that in this new organism was probably the most commonly found algae throughout the Gulf's coral reefs. They say it probably adapted as a result of the Gulf's harsh conditions. What role was evolution? The real question is how that happened. Researchers are not sure whether it was evolution or the algae that brought in by currents from outside the region and survived a selection process. University of Southampton professor Jörg Vinderman hopes the latter is true. He said it would be a good news because that would mean corals elsewhere might have the type of algae among them. And that's it. All right. So with that, don't forget... Take notes, you're looking at humans' impact on coral reefs, develop a claim about it, we're going to organize, but what you really need to do, what's the important parts, and start thinking about this. Find some good sentences that you can use in your writing, underline those now. All right, let's take a look at math. I hope it's not that silly uh, fruit bowl one. After opening an ancient bottle you find on the beach, a genie appears. I think that means like a genie. In payment for his freedom, he gives you a choice of either 50,000 gold coins or one magical gold coin. The magic coin will turn into two gold coins on the first day. The two gold coins will turn into four gold coins at the end of two days. By the end of the third day, there will be eight. The Dijini explains that the magic coins will continue this pattern of doubling each day for one moon cycle, 28 days. Which prize do you choose? When you've made your choice, answer these questions. The number of coins on the third day will be two times two times two. Can you write this? Can you write another expression using exponents for the total number of coins? There will be on the third day. Um, turn that into an exponent, you know, something like that. Write an expression for the number of coins will be on the 28th day. Is this more or less than a million coins? Here's a hint. This is a famous penny trick. If you look it up, you might find the answer somewhere on the interweb okay but take a look have some fun with that one all right procedural practice evaluate two to the eighth power well one two three four five six seven eight now you have to solve it because it says to evaluate so remember If you can figure out that, you can figure out this. I'm going to leave it at there. Write the expression as, a, as an exponent. Well, that's kind of what we did here. But they gave it to you here. You have to take it to there. Evaluate 6 to the 6th minus 3 to the 3rd. You're going to have to work out what... Work that out and subtract it. And evaluate 4 to the 5th plus 5 to the 6th, same sort of thing. 
And here's a clue. Use a calculator. I, I There's no way I would be working this out or making you do this uh, without a calculator. Okay? So work out a calculator. Write the expression as an exponent. Um, that is the same as that. So, And it doesn't say to evaluate it, so don't solve it. All right. Use a strategy to solve 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th. Okay. I would probably work out... One of the things you can figure out, if you have all the same numbers, you could also work it out as 3 to the 8th. Just add... your exponents but work it out that's what it is if you want to draw a picture whatever write another problem and solve uh, go with twos do something with twos here and you don't have to be this big okay but so work those out okay and that is all of day one. So tomorrow we will take a look at day two. I hope this helps. I hope this format helps so that you know what's going on. Uh, remember to check out Google Classroom and answer my poll questions. So with that, peace out.